hello friends hope you all doing well so today uh, in this video i'll discuss about the all the important questions for the exam for examination all the important topics of blood from physiology for the examination for first we'll discuss about the erythropoiesis that is a, one of the most important here i will discuss only the important questions or the important topics which may be come in the examination so first is erythropoiesis so erythropoiesis the formation of erythrocyte is called erythropoiesis the formation of erythrocytes or so the formation of erythro uh, erythrocyte or rbc is called erythropoiesis so uh, first site of erythropoiesis site of erythropoiesis in the embryo in the embryo first in the embryo during the embryonic life of erythropoiesis occurs in the uh, three stages in the embryo it occurs in three stages there mesoblastic hepatic and myeloid mesoblastic hepatic and myeloid stage there are mesoblastic hepatic and myeloid stage so mesoblastic stage during the first three months of intrauterine life during the that is uh, in a site in the embryo first we'll discuss about the embryonic life in the embryo it in the embryo it happens in three stages they are mesoblastic number two hepatic and myeloid mesoblastic hepatic and myeloid so during the first three months in intrauterine life in the embryonic life sorry in the embryonic life the primitive rbc rbc forms by the from the mesenchyme mesenchyme of yolk sac so first three months it comes from the mesenchyme of the yolk sac so, and the next step that is hepatic stage in the hepatic stage it comes it's a from the from the third month of intrauterine life liver is the main organ so first is mesoblastic stage then the stage that is hepatic mesoblastic hepatic and last is myeloid it is the uh, we are discussing about the erythropoiesis and the site of erythropoiesis so in the embryo it calls in the embryo it having three stages there mesoblastic hepatic and myeloid so mesoblastic is during the first three months of intrauterine life that is uh, from the mesenchyme of yolk sac then in the hepatic stage it come in the from the third month of the intrauterine life liver is the main organ which forms the rbc then the myeloid stage in the myeloid stage during the last three months of intrauterine life the red bell red blood cells are produced by the red bone marrow red bone marrow first so first is from the mesenchyme of yolk sac then in the hepatic stage is from the uh, from the liver and in the myeloid in the myeloid stage is the produced by the red bone marrow so that, that is the in the embryo that is forms in the uh, the, the for site of site of erythropoiesis in the embryonic embryo so now the erythropoiesis so erythropoiesis the different details about the physiology of the erythropoiesis and the factors that regulate erythropoiesis so erythropoiesis there are different stages of erythropoiesis uh, erythropoiesis that is so at first i have discussed uh, to you that the uh, what is erythropoiesis erythropoiesis is the formation of erythrocytes it is the process by which origin and development and the maturation of erythrocytes occurs that is erythropoiesis so there are different stages of erythropoiesis there i um, here i'll tell you a trick to remember erythropoiesis different stages of erythropoiesis that is me larema l a r e a m a just remember this a m a l a r e m a so just uh, in this way m means megaloblastic stage 
सॉरी मेगालोब्लास्ट और प्रो एरिथ्रोब्लास्ट सो डिफरेंट स्टेजेस ऑफ डिफरेंट स्टेजेस ऑफ एरिथ्रोपोइसिस आर एम फॉर मे एम फॉर मेगालोब्लास्ट और प्रो एरिथ्रोब्लास्ट ई फॉर आर्ली नॉर्मोब्लास्ट मै फो एम फॉर मेगालोब्लास्ट और प्रो एरिथ्रोब्लास्ट ई फॉर आर्ली नॉर्मोब्लास्ट आई फॉर इंटरमीडिएट नॉर्मोब्लास्ट ला रे एस मा एल ए ला ला फॉर लेट नॉर्मोब्लास्ट आर ई रेट आर ई फॉर रेटिक्यूलोसाइट्स एंड एम ए फॉर मेच्योर्ड एरोसाइट्स सो मे ला रे मा सो एम फॉर मेगालोब्लास्ट और प्रो एरिथ्रोब्लास्ट ई फॉर आर्ली नॉर्मोब्लास्ट आई फॉर इंटरमीडिएट नॉर्मोब्लास्ट एल ए ला डेट इज लेट नॉर्मोब्लास्ट रेटिक्यूलोसाइट्स एंड मेच्योर्ड आर बी सी और मेच्योर्ड एरिथ्रोसाइट्स सो दिस आर दी दिस आर दी स्टेजेस ऑफ एरिथ्रोसाइट एरिथ्रोपोइसिस एरिथ्रोपोइसिस डेट इज द सिक्स स्टेज नंबर वन इन द फर्स्ट स्टेज डेट इज प्रो एरिथ्रोब्लास्ट दिस इज द स्टेज प्रो एरिथ्रोब्लास्ट in the pro erythroblast this is the first cell derived it is the first cell derived from the stem cell this is the hematose hemocytoblast this is the first cell derived from the stem cell and cells at the site of the cell is large the site of the cell is large nucleus is large and does not contain hemoglobin and this does not contain hemoglobin nucleus is large and this does not contain hemoglobin so first stage is pro erythroblast that is or megaloblast or pro erythroblast that is the first cell derived from the stem cell and this site of this cell does not uh, cell is large nucleus is large and does not contain hemoglobin so that is the first stage that is pro erythroblast then the early erythrocytes early normoblast that is early erythrocytes this stage early erythrocyte stage so in the early erythrocytes or early normal in the early normoblast it's the diameter of its diameter of about 15 microns in the nucleus of the nucleoli disappear here is the nucleus of the nuclear disappear that is the normoblast stage this is the normoblast stage here nucleus is disappearing this is the normoblast stage in the normoblast stage so at first i have discussed about the megaloblast stage megaloblast then the early normoblast early normoblast in the early normoblast stage its diameter is about 15 microns about 15 microns in the nucleus in the nucleus the nucleoli disappear in the nucleus the nucleoli is disappear and condensation of the chromatin network occurs this cytoplasm is basophily now the after the early normoblast the next step is intermediate normoblast this cell is similar and this cell is similar in the early intermediate normoblast this cell is similar and diameter reduces from 10 to 12 micron from its diameter is reduces from reticulocytes this is the reticulocyte stage okay and this is erythrocytes so in the intermediate normoblast intermediate normoblast what happens in the intermediate intermediate normoblast the cells similar in size but uh, diameter reduces little diameter is reduces from 10 to 12 microns and the nucleus is still present but nucleus is still present but the but 
हिमोसाइटो सॉरी हिमो हिमोग्लोबिन स्टार्स अपीयरिंग फ्रॉम हेयर दी हिमोग्लोबिन स्टार्स अपीयरिंग सो इन द फोर इज लेट नॉर्मोब्लास्ट इन द लेट नॉर्मोब्लास्ट स्टेज इन द लेट नॉर्मोब्लास्ट स्टेज द न्यूक्लियस बिकम्स स्मॉल एंड इज ब्राउन एस इंक स्पॉट न्यूक्लियस so in the late normoblas the nucleus becomes small and is brown as ink spot nucleus and the hemoglobin is increased in its quantity and cytoplasm gets acidophilic in late normoblast nucleus disappears then the reticulocytes in the reticulocyte are are for reticulocytes mma ma for matured erythrocytes in the reticulocyte stage it is the known as immature rbc it's known as immature rbc the cytoplasm contains reticular network in the reticulocyte the cytoplasm contains reticular network and it is known as reticulocyte it is basophilic it's also basophilic network due to reticular network and it is known as reticulocyte and it is and it is basophilic now the last stage that is erythrocytes so or matured erythrocytes the reticular network starts appearing disappearing here the reticular network starts disappearing and the cells is known as matured rbc which is biconcave and is smaller in size it is biconcave and is smaller in size with diameter 7.2 microns with hemoglobin and without nucleus with hemoglobin and there is no nucleus it takes total 7 days to formation a rbc matured rbc so this is the uh, about erythro erythropoiesis now the different uh, factors factors of which regulates erythropoiesis that are general factors it's erythropoietin number 1 erythropoietin erythropoietin this is the erythrocytes erythropoietin is a general factor this erythropoietin is a general factor and for erythropoiesis which is secreted from kidney it's secreted from kidney and number 2 that is source of secretion the erythropoietin is produced by the juxta glomerular apparatus of kidney the erythropoietin this uh, this erythropoietin is uh, produced by the juxta glomerular juxta glomerular apparatus of kidney and stimulant for secretion generally hypoxia is responsible for production of erythropoietin so now the action action it occurs formation and release of new rbc action for the erythropoietin that is it forms new rbc into the circulation for 2 to 5 days after being secreted and it number 1 that is the new rbc form number 2 it it causes production it causes production of erythroblast cells from stem cells in bone marrow it it causes production of erythroblast cells from stem cells in bone marrow and number 3 it causes for the maturation of pro erythroblast into matured rbc through normoblast stage through the normoblast stage and number 4 it causes release of matured erythrocytes from blood it causes release of matured rbc from the blood so these are the action of erythrocytes
erythropoiety. Now one of the uh, now one of the most important topic that is hemostasis. Now to hemostasis is it's a process which cause bleeding to stop. It's a process which cause bleeding to stop, meaning to keep blood, meaning to keep blood within a damaged blood vessels. It is the first stage of wound healing. And this is the first stage of wound healing. And it is a major, it has three major stages. They are number one, vasoconstrictor. Number two, temporary blockage. And number three, that is blood coagulation blood coagulation this or blood coagulation okay so hemostasis is the process in which cause bleeding to stop or meaning to keep the blood with the damaged blood vessels and it is the first stage of own healing so that is the uh, that is hemostasis and blood coagulation it's also an important topic blood coagulation So blood coagulation is the uh, so different stages different uh, different factors which involve in blood coagulations they are fibrinogen then the prothrombin mechanism of coagulation of blood following are the different factors which are involved in the mechanism of coagulation of blood they are number one fibrinogen number one fibrinogen then the prothrombin thrombin the thromboplastin calcium ions then the labial factors then the presence not approved uh, the, the six number six that is present is not approved then the stable factors anti hemostatic hemophilic factor christmas factor then then the uh, plasma thromboplastin hegman factor fibrin and stabilizing factor so clotting this blood coagulation blood clotting is occurs in three stages different stages there number one formation of prothrombin activator number two that is formation conversion to prothrombin into thrombin and then number three that is conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin so these are the different factors which are of blood coagulation clotting occurs in the blood three stages so different stages of blood coagulation is number one formation of prothrombin activator number two that is conversion of prothrombin into thrombin prothrombin to thrombin number three that is conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin from fibrinogen to fibrin so that is the one of the most important topic blood coagulation then erythropoiesis then the so now uh, the uh, different uh, that is one of the it's also a most important topic that is anemia it's a most important questions for examination that is anemia anemia is a condition when hemoglobin level of blood is below the normal level the hemoglobin level decreased in its the hemoglobin level decreased so classification of anemia it's classified into two types there megaloblastic uh, sorry morphological classification and etiological classification number one morphological and number two that is etiological 
morphological classification and etiological classification so morphological classification is it is classified into four types that, that are normocytic normochromic that is number two that is macrocytic normochromic then normocytic normochromic macrocytic normochromic macrocytic hypochromic and microcytic hypochromic first normocytic normochromic macrocytic normochromic okay first normocytic normochromic number 2 macro macrocytic normochromic then the macrocytic hypochromic and microcytic hypochromic so first morphological classification number 1 normocytic normochromic normocytic normochromic anemia in it the size of rbc and hemoglobin content of rbc is normal only rbc count is reduced rbc rbc count reduced so normocytic in the normocytic normochromic the only rbc count is reduced now the macrocytic normochromic macrocytic normochromic rbc is larger in size and due to this macrocytic in the macrocytic normochromic anemia the rbc is larger in size and due to this rbc count is reduced here also rbc count is reduced rbc count is reduced because of the because the uh, rbc um, because the hemoglobin content is reduced hemoglobin content is reduced sorry the rbc count is reduced the hemoglobin content is also reduced due to this rbc count is released rbc count RBC count niche ke jata hai so macro in the macrocytic normochromic anemia the RBC count also reduced RBC is larger in size and due to this RBC larger in size here number one that is normocytic normochromic anemia in this size of rbc and hemoglobin content is normal only rbc count is reduced here in the macrocytic the rbc is larger in size and due to this rbc count is reduced the hemoglobin content is reduced number three that is micro, macrocytic hypochromic macrocytic hypochromic anemia the rbc are immature in this condition the rbc are immature and the and are larger in size and hemoglobin content of in cell is less so rbc are immature and the larger in size and hemoglobin content is less and number three four that is microcytic hypochromic anemia Microcytic hypochromic anemia, the RBC are smaller in size, the hemoglobin content of RBC is less. So RBC are smaller in size, so the hemoglobin content is also less. So the uh, morphological classification is done, normocytic, normochromic, microcytic, microcytic, normochromic, micro, but it's in the macrocytic, uh, hypochromic, microcytic, hypochromic. So these are the uh, morphological classification now the etiological classification
now the uh, morphological done now the etiological classification etiological classification so the etiological divides by the four that is uh, hemorrhagic number one hemorrhagic number two hemolytic nutrition deficiency number 4 aplastic so these are the four uh, etiological classification of anemia hemolytic hemorrhagic hemolytic nutritive deficiency and aplastic so hemorrhagic hemorrhage it occurs in the condition hemorrhagic it's occur in the condition like accident liver ulcer then excessive uterine bleeding then the uh, hemophilia etc it's caused by hemorrhage like uh, different uh, like uh, accident ulcer then the then the excessive uterine bleeding then uh, hemophilia in this case that is hemorrhagic anemia may occur acute hemorrhagic anemia condition it's may be both acute and chronic number 2 that is hemolytic anemia hemolytic it occurs in the following condition like by chemical poisoning then the infections like malaria and uh, and septicemia infections like malaria septicemia number 3 that is presence of chemical uh, hemolysin hemolytic so hemorrhagic hemorrhage like accident but then ulcer uterine bleeding etc then the hemolytic it by the chemical poisoning chemical poisoning then the infections like malaria and septicemia and in the number 3 that is presence of chemical hemo chemical hemolysin and number 3 that is nutrition deficiency the deficiency of iron protein then vitamins such as vitamin c folic acids vitamin b12 cause nutrition deficiency anemia that is iron protein iron protein then vitamin c folic acid b12 it cause the nutrition deficiency anemia now the aplastic anemia it is due to the disorder of red bone marrow disorder of red bone marrow disorder of red bone marrow it is aplastic anemia disorder of red bone marrow it reduce and replaced by the fatty tissues and reduce and replaced by the fatty tissues now the symptoms of anemia symptoms that is a color of the skin becomes pale the skin gets thin and dry and losing elasticity and losing elasticity then the uh, grayish white uh, grayish hairs the nails become brittle the nails become brittle and breakable and there is a increase in heart rate and and cardiac output then the rate and force of respiration is then the uh, rate and force of respiration is increased then the albuminuria is common during anemia and albuminuria is also common during anemia so these are the symptoms of anemia likely number 1 that is color skin the color of the skin pale, pale skin gets thin and dry losing elasticity grayish hairs brittle nail nail and breakable nail, breakable there is a heart rate will be high then the rate of the force of respiration is increased and albuminuria is most common anemia 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 now 
that is anemia we have discussed about anemia now the uh, now the important topic that is immunity it's also two types that is natural and acquired here natural that is non specific here the uh, acquired is specific here natural is also divided into two types they are humoral then this cell mediated and it's also divided by two types that is humoral and cell mediated humoral and cell mediated it is also humoral and cell mediated humoral is mediated and complete and complement nutritional neutrophils as neutrophils uh, here the humoral is beta lymphocyte as cell mediated t lymphocytes so this is the classification of immunity immunity that is natural and acquired it's also classified in humor humoral and cell mediated it's also humoral and cell mediated so these are the classification of uh, immunity so these are the most common questions most uh, important questions for examination for the examination blood group the importance of blood group importance of blood group also important because it's a very essential for socially medially and medically and judicially and judicially and the importance of knowing the blood group is important during blood transfusion and also in the time of tissue transplants and number 2 that is one should know or his or her blood groups because and become a member of the blood donor group number 3 that knowledge of blood groups helps the helps to prevent the complications due to rh incompatibility and save the child from disorder like erythroblastocin fatalis and it is very helpful in mediological medical medical legal as cases to sort out the parental disputes and as a supporting evidence in identifying the criminals so this is the important topics these are were the these were the important topics in the chapter blood so there number one that is uh, erythropoiesis then the after erythropoiesis we have discussed about uh, can remember now that is hemostasis in the after hemostasis we have discussed about blood coagulation then anemia then uh, then the immune difference uh, different uh, immunity classification of immunity then the uh, importance of blood group so thank you for watching this video and please subscribe the channel